This filter here is the Antlia ALPT dual bandpass 5 nanometer hydrogen alpha and oxygen 3 filter. It's a name that just flows off the tongue and yet it is up there as one of the best filters I've ever used. Now as the name suggests, it allows through hydrogen alpha and oxygen 3 wavelengths of light. It is one of these entries in the ever popular category of multi bandpass filters. Now I've had this filter for quite some time now and I've used it previously with an ASI 2600 MC as well as the ASI Flavor 85 MC and I want to share my thoughts and feelings about how it was using this in case you are in the market for a dual band filter or you're looking for this filter in particular maybe I can help your decision making. So let's get into it. Is it any good? To begin with straight out the box I really like this magnetic case. Now Antlia had no need to go this hard on a case but I suppose at the price point they're asking for this it's nice that they made a bit of thought and effort into the aesthetics of the container. The Antlia filter comes in two flavors we have the 36 millimeter version as well as the two inch version this here is of course the two inch version which I have used both with a Stella Mira 90 EDT triplet refracting telescope and my ever faithful Skywatcher Evo Star 80 ED. Naturally, a dual bandpass filter like this is marketed and aimed towards color camera users. You won't really get much use out of this if you use it for a mono camera unless you're trying to make a luminance layer, which some people do. So if you're there with a mono camera, feel free to carry on watching, but it's primarily designed for color cameras. The transmission of this filter, as stated by Antlia on their marketing copy, is 90% peak transmission for the hydrogen alpha wavelength and 82% for oxygen 3. I've also noticed that this filter did a really good job of blocking out the local light pollution I have in my area, which is primarily sulfur based street lights. However, five nanometers is quite narrow and that is one benefit of narrow bandpass filters. It really helps block out that light pollution. And Antlia said, that it is good for up to bottle eight. Now I don't live in bottle eight. If you live in a bottle eight or higher, I'd love to get your thoughts on, did it actually help block out any of the light pollution? It does also state that this filter is designed for DSLR cameras. And whilst it would work on DSLR cameras because they're color cameras still, I don't think I would actually recommend that. You see, first of all, you would have to modify your DSLR. No big deal. People modify DSLRs all the time. However, five nanometers is very narrow. Now, unless you have a fairly modern camera with a really good sensor in it, you're going to notice quite a lot of noise in those images. Not to mention when you're using it with DSLR as well, which typically have quite low quantum efficiency. They're not very good at using the light that gets through and we're start blocking out most of it as well. You'll have to take much longer exposures. Not so bad in the winter, but in the summer, that's gonna absolutely cook a camera sensor. I had that experience once before. There was a video up in the card and I'll have it in the description down below. The thermal buildup just ruined the images. So I wouldn't really recommend it for DSLR photography. I would definitely recommend it if you're using a dedicated camera and if you're using a cooled dedicated camera, go nuts. It's gonna absolutely work well for you. Now in use, this filter performs really well. As I mentioned already, it did a really good job blocking out the light pollution. However, I tested it during a supermoon and I'll put images up now. And yeah, okay, I lost a little bit of contrast, but I was still able to use this filter for long exposure deep sky photography during a full moon. However, weirdly, I did get halos in some of my images. The marketing copy says that the way they designed this had really steep bands on their wavelengths to help minimize internal reflections. Now, maybe, I am mistaking internal reflection with halo, but I thought an internal reflection would cause a halo. Now, I wanna stress something here. This only happened, I only got halos when I used it on my ATED with the ASI 585MC. That's when I really noticed them around very bright stars. When I used it with the Stella Mira 90ED and the ASI 2600MC, I didn't notice a single halo, which tells me it's something to do with the imaging rig. So I've noticed them and I'm reporting that, but some results may vary. Another thing I dislike about this filter, and it is purely personal situation, I understand that, is the price. 
Again, I understand why it's priced where it is, and I understand the performance and it is a great filter. But the 36 mm version, at the time of this review, comes in at 312 pounds. The two inch version, which I have right here, comes in at 398 pounds. It costs more than the 585 camera that I tested it with. Now, I personally could not afford a filter like that. At this point in my life, I cannot afford 400 pounds for a filter. And maybe that's what I'm not happy about because it's a great filter. So big thank you to First Art Optics for loaning me this for this review. The contrast you get out of this filter, that is attracting dust like no one's business. The contrast out of this filter is high, like really high. The separation you get from nebulosity to the background sky is amazing. This image I took of the North American Nebula is testament to that. It is about two hours of data shot through the 90 EDT with the 2600 MC, and it is one of my most favorite images I've taken to date. I love this photo that came out of that rig with this filter. Now we can look at some example images I took with this filter through the Skywatcher EvoStar 80ED, as well as the ASI 585 uncooled camera. First up, we have this example of the Elephant's Trunk Nebula. Now, I personally, I probably pushed the editing a bit too hard on it and I've introduced some noise, but the performance of the filter, I really like the detail and the contrast. So this is a full stack. Let's now look at the Elephant's Trunk Nebula, which is a one hour stack, 12 times five minutes, shot on the night of a supermoon. Next up, we have about an hour of the Flaming Star Nebula, again, shot on the supermoon. This was all the same night. Here is one hour of Melat 15, the heart of the Heart Nebula. Again, same night, same supermoon. And one of my favorites here is actually one hour and 40 minutes of the Bubble Nebula through that same pesky supermoon. And I just love the Bubble Nebula. Look at the detail that's come out of that nebula. And finally, to round off the examples, here is one hour of the Tulip Nebula, on the same full moon. And one example I want to draw your attention to from the First Light Optics website for this filter is a photograph from Hyun Su Lee in South Korea. Notice the horsehead nebula here. Now with the ATED, I'm fairly certain Alnantak would have a massive halo around it. But with this Newtonian, you can see it is very well controlled and there is no halo. So you might be able to see the performance of this filter is actually really quite good, especially shooting through a supermoon. Now I'll have a link in my description down below where there's a Google Drive link with a zip folder in it that's got all those examples in it. If you wanna download them, look at the high quality version for yourself and assess the quality of the pictures if you're looking to make a purchase. And if you do decide to make a purchase, feel free to use the link in my description down below. It helps the channel, helps support the channel and it comes at no extra cost to you. And that is it. That is my experiences I've had when using this Antlia ALPT five nanometer dual band hydrogen alpha and oxygen three filter. Now it is personally out of my budget and that's one thing I dislike. <laughs> Call me salty, fine. Another thing I noticed was halos in my own personal setup, but we've already discussed that it seems to be something up with that particular combination. In other examples, the stars are pinpoint. It has amazing separation of nebulosity to the background sky and the detail it can pick up is fantastic. If you found this video review useful, go ahead, let me know in the comments down below. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Give me a thumbs down if I could have done better. And while you're down there, consider subscribing for more videos such as this or vlogs, tutorials, or reviews like this. Thank you very much for your time and thank you very much for watching. Hope you have clear skies. Keep looking up and keep the cameras clicking. I'll see you next time.